people are recognizing that well a car is not a car anymore right it, it is again is a vehicle for for data and people are not only realizing that but educating themselves about these matter and about these issues that was john izagire from ontology it's a blockchain project whose mission is to redefine trust as they put it theirs is a blockchain for self sovereign id and data As we humans have evolved rapidly through the internet age, we haven't fully evolved our instincts about privacy. We're in an age where it feels like even the idea of privacy is being redefined. Big data and AI are somewhat new concepts to most of us, but the idea of Big Brother is not. So, is there a way to control our data to benefit us as individuals and still be self-sovereign? Let's dig into it. All of this and more on this episode of So What About Crypto? 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 You all know I love Molto Marketing and Productions. They are the awesome production company working with me on my upcoming video series Adventures in Crypto. Their team handles it all and they're even a full service advertising agency with a global reach and a global roster of creative talent to handle any size project. They even produce, distribute and sponsor this podcast. Check out Molto Marketing and Productions at moltomarketing.com. That's M O L T O marketing.com. And this week I am welcoming a new sponsor, B Mortgage App. They are disrupting the entire mortgage industry with their groundbreaking app that lets you figure out how much you can afford for your next home and even go through the mortgage process completely on your cell phone. It's like a digital mortgage loan officer in your pocket. Check out bemortgageapp.com. All right, I hope you enjoy this one. Hi everyone. So what about crypto back with you today if you're back with us? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. You know, Bill, this morning when I was getting ready to come here and do the podcast, I was thinking about privacy and anonymity and how that's more important than ever and I don't think I realized in fact, I know I didn't understand and realize how important it was beyond what I knew until I learned about blockchain and Bitcoin. So, I've kind of started this backwards. <laughs> In a way, I kind of feel like now that I'm learning what I'm learning over the past 2 years, had I learned about things like how our economy works or doesn't work, the Federal Reserve, privacy, anonymity that I would have now a deeper understanding going into Bitcoin and blockchain. Whatever, I guess however you get into it, you get into it and wherever you have your aha moment is the important part. But I mean, I saw the benefits right away when I learned about Bitcoin and blockchain, but again, I went in reverse and learned can't kind of came in the back way. Um I kind of feel like if people are having trouble understanding why this is such a big deal, blockchain and Bitcoin and everything related to it that they start learning about these things uh privacy and that kind of stuff to first get into why this is so important well of course and and you know just as a as a civilization we're in a transition you know an amazing transition you know i think privacy is a human right but we're faced with new paradigms about what privacy means you know big data in the past it, even the past 2 years the amount of data that's being leveraged and used with AI and how it affects us in many ways sometimes in ways we can't even comprehend or aren't aware of i think for most of us so i think we're at this stage where people don't even really know what privacy is for them or should mean for them and i don't even know if we've decided that as a as a civilization we're in this middle zone of seeing what the lack of privacy can mean for us in both good and bad ways i suppose i know personally you know i'm a paradox so to speak you know because i you know i use ai and big data in my business <laughs> and but i don't want anybody to know <laughs> anything about me um so that's a you know i wrestle with that all the time i'm like uh, you know there's 
I've, I've kind of I've got two sides of that coin, I suppose. And I think the way that the Googles of the world have leveraged data in many ways can be a very positive things and thing and has been. But that's that creepy feeling too of oh my god, they're just, they know everything where I go, everything I'm looking at, all of these that that's bothersome. So I think you know I'm I'm anxious to talk to John. Uh, from ontology today on this podcast because I think they're doing things that are a little you know harnessing big data leveraging it finding ways to you know for people to build with their platform and uh, and and communicate with other platforms and I think they see a vision of the future that uh, and how that can be used and it seems pretty apparent to me they're leveraging it uh, in a big way with big companies of the world to, you know, make what I hope is really good use of it. Right. And have us be more informed. John Isigire with uh, Ontology is joining us and, and you guys are tackling this very issue, which is why we wanted to talk to you today, because I really feel like, and myself included, until I started learning about a blockchain in this whole space, my my idea of privacy and protecting my identity was so very limited. Um, you know, we all became very aware of how vulnerable vulnerable we are during the identity theft era. We worried about our social security numbers and our driver's licenses and things, basic stuff like that, and worried about keeping those secure so that somebody couldn't open accounts in your name and credit cards and things of the like. But it's much more than that. It is m- bigger than people can even imagine what um, is known about them, each individual person, and, and what is put out there uh, to companies and what kind of data companies have on all of us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. It's, uh, it's a true pleasure. Um, and definitely uh, data is becoming... Um, a very interesting topic, not only for um, companies, but also for individuals. Now, of course, as you mentioned before, um, large corporations were the first one to recognize the value of data, right? And mostly because of the profit that data represents for the companies. But nowadays, individuals and what I would like to call the younger generation, I'm turning 34, I'm starting to feel a bit older. Uh, but I see that the, the younger generation are starting to take care of what they believe is their right, um, at least digitally, to exercise their um digital rights and what it means to be online and how you can protect that data, how you can protect what you share. Um, I think that has a profound um, value theoretically um, and philosophically on how we are approaching and how we're dealing the new economy in the 21st century, the digital economy. And this is what we at Ontology are trying to build. We're trying to build a mechanism and we're trying to build frameworks and protocols on how to protect individuals' data, um, companies' data, um, and even machines' data, but also how to create that bridge so all of the parties can uh, make a relationship and exchange that data and those components and okay why not make a profit but everyone is on the same page um so it it is a hard task uh but blockchain as the technology is enabling um that and also um cryptography and uh consensus algorithms which we might be able to discuss later um all of them together are uh, making this possible. Without it, I think it will be, um, I wouldn't say impossible, but it will definitely make the, the road even even harder. Well, I'm, I'm glad you feel that the younger generation, um, I mean, beyond millennials, Gen Z uh, <laughs> in particular, because my kids are part of that. And right. um, I know I'm Gen X. So I was part of that whole revolution of, wow, the internet, 
and and you know everybody just jumped on and piled on and nobody was thinking about uh privacy and data and all that kind of stuff this was like this novel thing this is an amazing way that is going to change our lives we all recognize that at the time and and you know i was um in college when all of that started happening we we, we got email and internet and all that kind of stuff and it was great I don't think anyone thought of the consequences that we're seeing today and we've seen since the internet and everything with it has grown. Um, so I'm really glad to hear that you feel the younger generation recognizes all of this stuff. They're learning from our mistakes and the things we've learned along the way to protect their identity because I I harp on that with my kids all the time. They've known nothing different. And same with Bill. Uh, our kids have grown up totally in a world with uh, iPhones and internet and everything else that comes with it. So it's extremely important. But one of the things I didn't understand until I started learning was, one, I started learning when I learned about blockchain about how companies, why data, our data uh, as individuals is so important to them. It, it's it, It's been referred to as, I think, if I'm correct, like digital gold. Uh, right. when they mine our data, it's like mining gold and, um, they can sell it and resell it and everybody makes money off of our personal information except us. Right. And it's our information. So not only is all of our information being put out there to who knows, uh, what and where, but people have monetized it and, and no one is benefiting more than the companies who take it. And I, when I started learning about that, I'm like, wait a minute, it's it, this is all personal stuff about me. I should be entitled to how much I want released, how much I want to sell to make money from my own data. We're not at that point yet. Um, and and the thought is that blockchain could help people uh, harness their own data, take control of their own data, and flip the script and say to companies like the Googles of the world, <clears throat> if you want to mine my data, if you want some of my data, it's going to cost you this much. And we put the price on our data. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think it's very interesting how you narrow it down. Um, you mentioned something very relevant, which is um, mistakes um, and the mistakes that we and perhaps uh, the older generation have done in the last Let's call it last twenty years. Um, however, you know, I'm I'm a I used to be quite the pessimist, right? And um and I used to skate, uh, I used to do graffitis, uh, I used to be a, a bit of an anarchist when I was uh, 15, 16, 17. So my teen uh, years, I I was a bit against the system and so on. Um, nowadays, in retrospective, I'm starting to see it a bit differently. Um, I think that, first of all, internet as a technology is still brand new, if you think about it, right? So if you look at human history and the achievements of the human history in, let's say, the last uh, 500 years, you narrow it down to the internet, and it's actually still a very, very young technology. Still, we're trying to learn how to utilize the internet itself, right? So on top of the internet as a technology, as a tool, several layers have been built over these last 20 years, 25 years. One of these layers uh, has been the communication technology, which we know as social media platforms. In this case, you can, you know, I don't want to name them. I think we all know it. But these social media platforms, I think, um, they are not the evil corporation that sometimes we tend to believe they are, um, even though what they have done in the past um, isn't the, the most objective thing to do or the more humane thing to do. I have to admit that. However, I also don't think that they have an evil agenda on how to capitalize on people's data and just exploit it. I'm, I, I have become a bit of a positive individual to that regard. I think that at the same time, as we're learning as individuals, as a society, companies are also learning how to deal with the issues that, um, that harness data and um, make a profit out of it. 
So I, for once, uh, believe that the European Union in this case have done a great job promoting the GDPR um, law. And that means that social media platforms and technology platforms now at least have to declare and ask the individual if he or she is right in or he or she is able and willing to share uh, sensitive data, metadata, or what I like to call alpha data, which in this case is your address, date of birth, uh, sex, uh, gender, uh, and so on, right? So this has been the first step that a government or supranational government has taken. Now, California has done it as well in states, and I think the world is reacting positively towards it. And also... Um, well, but John, John I, I want to st- I want to ask you about yeah. that. I, I agree. I think that's a positive step. But is it really making a difference? I mean, to the individual, um, you know, obviously it, it does hold businesses accountable for data. And, you know, as you know, we in, in our agency, we create websites and, and advertising and the like. And, you know, we all have to comply with those new GDPR rules and what California is doing. So that part's good and helps, I think, with data breaches and the, and the like. But on the, on the personal level for the individual, when it comes to the point of the individual having the ability to decide if they want that data, uh, you know, dispersed and sold and, 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 and the metadata that you refer to, are people really even grasping that they have that ability to do it? Are they even caring uh, I mean, what in your business are you noticing with that? Yeah. So answering um, straightforward, I would say no. Um, it hasn't achieved um, that of an impact um, referring to GDPR or um, the the law data in, in California. I think it's a first step. Uh, let's, let's take it from there. It's just a, a first step into the right direction. Now, when it comes down to blockchain, and smart contracts and cryptography and how these technologies are helping on um, preserving the individual's data and educating societies on how to protect their own data. I think we are still on a very early stage. Um, And also in terms of the technology development, I think what blockchain has achieved in this regard in the last two years to three years is remarkable. However, we're still trying to figure out how to A, educate people, and B, make people actually feel accountable for their own data. And we are figuring out that one of the one of the one of the straightforward ways is to incentivize humans to incentivize societies on to protect their data and the way you do that well first of all you have to build a community around the concept of data and the concept of preserving and uh, being careful uh, with your data how you do that well you know it, it's it's complicated because it's kind of the chicken and egg question, right? You're trying to educate them at the same time you have to incentivize the community. At the same time, you have to build the technology. And at the same time, you have to stay, you know, uh, your cash flow has to remain positive so you can keep on going. But we we are figuring out um, from a token economics perspective. So once people are um, entering the ontology framework ecosystem, uh, by the way, you can do it by going to uh, ONT.io. Um, you have access to a platform, a collaborative platform that will teach you, first of all, what is blockchain, what is a smart contract, and why that technology matters when you're dealing with data, with your personal data. Secondly, the way you create a community is through that education, but then comes incentives. And in this case, we are rewarding the communities with um, our token economics, which happens to be native tokens of our chain, uh, ONT and ONG. When you engage yourself into that decentralized identity framework and you execute only 
with the data you want to share online, you start to earn rewards based on what you're sharing, what you're willing to share, the access that those third parties are having. Um, you get rewarded with those tokens. Now, if you're familiar with the token economy, you will find that you can actually make profit out of these tokens. You can go to an exchange, to a centralized exchange. You can exchange those tokens for any other tokens or by using our Ontology wallet, uh, which happens to be an app as well called Onto App. You can also just go to any shop and basically you can you can buy goods with those tokens nowadays. So that's the point where technology has advanced dramatically from understanding data, understanding blockchain, smart contracts, cryptography, entering in that framework and having access to the incentives and also exchanging those incentives for goods, rewards, or anything that you would like to have in, in real life, right? So it's not an ethereal concept anymore. So this, okay, so the way I see in this case, the tokenization of things, it's it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship where both, um, you know, <laughs> I don't want to uh, call uh, the big company data miners parasites, but it's where a host <laughs> and a, a parasite right. are, are uh, both benefiting, right? Um, right. It's a, the, so instead of one having the power or the other having the power, meaning us having complete control of our data or a company having complete control of our data, it's a bit of a win-win where the companies still have your data, but you get to decide how much you want to engage with that data and you're making um, tokens, money that can be exchanged for goods, services, and other tokens. Well, I, I'm, ex- you know, I want right. to, if I'm, if I'm breaking this down correctly, or is that oversimplifying? You're, you're, no, you're breaking it down correctly, but keep in mind that also that's only one of the things that you can do, right? So for example, you can also, if you, if you're familiar, well, I think everyone is familiar with opening an email account or opening, you know, any kind of a digital account, you will always have to share your information, your your data, right? You have to share your address, you have to share your gender, um, your name, etc., right? And you have to use multiple identities online. I believe that a regular human being on the Western world nowadays at least has over 50 uh, digital identities online, okay? So what happens is, is that your information is everywhere and you don't have control on that information any longer, right? So you don't know what's what's going on, who has access to your actually your home address. And actually that matters because you want privacy. You don't want people to know exactly where you live and knock on your door for whatever reason, right? So you can actually create a decentralized identity that will allow you to only share the piece of information that A, you want to share, and B, that company, whether it's an email company, is asking you for um, for giving to them. And that's the only piece of information that you will be able to share. Um, so that's one case. Also, we have these reusable KYCs. So every time that you want to open a more straightforward uh, channel, say a bank account, for example, or an insurance uh, account, right? They are going to ask for a KYC, a know your client. Right. And what happens is that, again, you have to share all these gigantic amount of information. You have to go through a phone call or a video call and etc. So it's time consuming. And again, you don't have control over your data. You're just handle it over to whatever third party verifier out there. Um, what a DID, a decentralized identity achieves is again, You can use one piece of data, one piece of information, and you can reuse it as on many platforms as you want. And you will always have control on who's using it, for what purpose, and what you're sharing. And this will be visible because you're working with an open source blockchain as ontology. So everything goes uploaded in the smart contract, which happens to be public. So everyone has access to see that piece of information 
when it was executed, who is the owner, and who has the right to see it. And it goes is as in anonymous because it's being encrypted with cryptography technology. So it's actually once you start to see in it in that way, even though now seems harsh or complicated for people to comprehend, I think uh, you don't have to even worry about the technology behind that anymore. You can just download your DID, use Onto app or any other app that you prefer to disagree and just follow the steps and you will only take care of one login, one key to login into all these third-party verifiers. And basically, that's all what you have to care in the future. You don't have to care about blockchain itself. You don't have to care about the complicated mathematics behind or algorithmic technology. So that's what we're trying to achieve. It's an easy ramp for people to use as well. Well, I can certainly see that being better than sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google. Right. Um, Right, which people do all the time, Bill. I mean, they don't think about it at all. Yeah, sure, here, I'll sign up through Facebook. And I'm I'm starting to realize, and people are starting to realize, I'm just like everybody else. I'm like, why is that such a bad idea? But now I understand, holy cow, I'm just, I'm connecting all of these people platforms and they're all getting my data and uh, you know now I feel like it's totally out of control. Absolutely. Okay, so with that being said, I I I'm going this is going to be a pretty long question. <laughs> so bear with me. No worries. But I was looking over your website earlier today and trying to get a little feel for, you know, ONT. Uh it's a very comprehensive project and you guys in my opinion look like you're you know, doing more than just developing a blockchain, you're setting it up for serious development, utilizing blockchain, I think more importantly, and, and, and exchanging between blockchains. But you've got a really cool little video on your website, right? You know, with a young lady yeah. sharing her information, you know, sharing with her, her friends on her phone, and then she's getting in her Tesla. She's using her face and her ID, her digital ID, I guess, to access, getting in the Tesla, driving, all of that information is being recorded and exchanged with some database of her blockchain. She can, uh, she's getting points. Her trust score is growing and she gets out. She's now secured her Tesla through the blockchain. She's also now put it up for rent, you know, sharing. She can share it where now anybody that also has that trust that, uh, Trust score could just come along and pay her automatically through the platform, use her Tesla for the afternoon, bring it back, all of these things. Um, all of that stuff seems, you know, you know, to most of us, very futuristic, but we all know that that's what, you know, in, in this blockchain world, where we see this as all being possibilities. So, and, and, we, and we talked about how using this digital ID being a better version of the Facebook version because we know that when you use that Facebook one that Facebook gets access to all this other information about you. Right. The the scary part about what you guys are showing even though it's very cool and slick it still makes a person like me go, "Well, wait a minute. Is there a way this then becomes a instead of a trust score, a like a social score like China is employing right now?" And people get scared of that. Like at what level is this trust score, can it be used against you and shut you out and deplatform you, so to speak, or de- you know, marginalize you or, or disenfranchise you? That is, that is actually a fantastic, phenomenal question. That example that is being shown on the video um, is for the automotive industry um, and also the kind of the the connection between IoT and um, and automobiles nowadays. So the automobile industry uh, for at least the last five years has become a raw data marketplace since they are collecting all these impressive, gigantic amount of data from the end customers, which in this case will be the the person or the owner um, of the car. Um, What kind of data, right? Because people sometimes think, well, I'm just driving. What kind of data uh, will I, you know, produce? Well, 
a lot. So first of all, uh, destiny. Where, where are you going? Uh, destination from point A to point B. Second of all, where on earth are you driving and why? Um, third, well, what happens when you're driving? Do you stop um, at a gas shop? Um, do you stop at a McDonald's? Do you make phone calls? With whom are you talking? What kind of music are you listening to? And, 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 right? So the automobile has become much more that a means of movement. It has become a vehicle for data. Now, what the video is trying to show is that for, um, for IoT devices to keep on working in the future, these will run as in a peer-to-peer -peer network. A peer-to-peer -peer network guarantees that there is no third party kind of controlling or filtering that data and obtaining the profit out of it, right? So you are the absolute owner of the data that you are producing and you are the only one able to share it or um, actually monetize it, right? So that's the first uh, part that we're trying to achieve in here. The second part, and I think you are very right when it comes down to scoring, which we're developing this scoring technology. What scoring is trying to achieve in here is mostly that the, the digital economy we believe is moving again into a more pseudo-anonymous or peer-to-peer -peer networks as an integration of networks where humans are the ones who are going to be taking the decision on their economic well-being. Now, that being said, um, for you in the future to be able to ask for a loan or to be able to ask for a credit, right? you will have to have a credit score as we have nowadays in, in our current economic system. So if you go to Chase or if you go to Bank of America, you have to prove that you have the means of payment and that your credit score is enough for requesting a, a loan or a mortgage or anything related, right? So this will have to happen in the future in the digital economy for you to borrow an X amount of tokens or an X amount of let's call it Bitcoin, for just using an example, there has to be a, 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 a rank. There has to be something indicating that you as an individual have the means of repaying that X, Y, Z amount that you're requesting. Now, the interesting and the cool part in here is that only the data that this lending platform is requesting will be shared. For example, uh, you asked for a credit last year for X amount and you paid it in 90 days, right? So this payment was executed, was uploaded in the blockchain, all green, good to go, give the credit. And that will be the only piece of information. They're not going to ask you for proof of work or they're not going to ask you for where do you live or if you have another house that you can um, you can put as collateral. Um, they're not going to ask you for sensitive information about your family, your wife, your children, your spouse, whatever. So this, this is what we're trying to achieve in here for a decentralized score system, uh, where only the data that the lender um, is requesting and the lending platform is trying to get, but nothing else will leave without your consent. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is, it is, uh, it is a complicated, uh, roadmap that we have, but, uh, we strongly believe that blockchain technology can help solving these problems and actually creating an ecosystem where all the parties can access that verified data securely. Um, and this is our aim. So uh, if people were trying to learn about what blockchain technology can technically or potentially do, when you see an example like this, uh, it becomes clear, uh, just it's mind blowing actually how it can um, affect other parts of our lives. Banking, like you said, drive, even driving, um, how it can impact different industries and how um, it can 
make impacts to our advantage, uh, just as the regular people. You know, we haven't had access to things like this. Uh, we haven't had access even to our own data data to monetize it. And this potentially, this technology is going to put that in into our hands. Um, and and I think once people learn about how our data is being mined and how it's monetized and how everybody's making money from it, but us with our own data, you start to see the value of this technology of blockchain and how it could potentially make our lives that much better. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it creates such a robust and trustworthy ecosystem for payments, for settlements, for vehicle identification, as we were seeing in the video, for data sharing, for protocol of data sharings, for oracles, integrating that off-chain data into the on-chain data. Um, I, I think the technology itself is remarkable. And decentralized identity has been our um, core um, business vertical since day one. And we're trying to achieve that level in that we can we can become kind of the pioneers if we are not already, but the pioneers in the industry, but also educate the society on why this issue matter more than anything else at the moment. Because data, as you mentioned right at the at the very beginning of the interview, has become the digital gold. And I think this is this is this is worthy to explain and to dig a bit deeper, right? Um, the way that data has become this digital gold is that companies and advertisers, mostly um, social media platforms, let's call it like that, which are not social at all, um, they're trying or they have achieved this kind of consensus in which we are all consumers and all what they care is to know your likes, know your dislikes, and know your digital behavior so they can keep offering you more products, right? Whether let's call it Nike or Adidas shoes, right? So they want to know which age group you belong to, what's your gender, what do you like, what kind of sports do you like, um, how many friends do you have, actually with how many friends do you speak um, on a weekly basis? Are you close to your parents or not? Do you have children? How old are your children? What's your um, age status? Are you divorced? Are you married? So You're scaring me, John. <laughs> <laughs> but so they, yeah, they when you start thinking of all the little <laughs> things like that, that's mind-blowing. And that's all out there on all of us. So they, they really <laughs> they really get you. And the way they do it, and now this is where the human innovation comes into display actually what social medias have achieved is is remarkable because they have made you i don't want to use the word slave but sort of um and they only and they get you you like to use these platforms because they're cool because they're posting great content because you know the cool kids in the block are using it because these superstars are in there so you get hooked to it. Plus, they use a lot of algorithm technology to get you addicted to it as well. So, yeah. you know, you kind of spend hours looking at these platforms and you are sharing constant influx, gigantic amount of data. Um, so we have decided at Ontology, but also I will say the blockchain community as a whole, we have decided to put a stop um, to that and said, well, guys, you're doing a great job. Social media platforms, you're great for, you know, showcasing and displaying human innovation and pictures. And that's amazing. But guys, now let's start taking care of the user's data and of the company's data and what you're doing with that data, how you're making money with it, why you don't share a piece of the pie as well. That will be fair. So, this is what we're trying to achieve at Ontology. This is what we're trying to achieve with blockchain technology um, and with decentralized identity, uh, decentralized identity frameworks. 
So on your your roadmap, you know, you don't have to disclose everything, you know, of your plans, obviously. But I would like to think that you're, you know, obviously you've got to focus on automotives. And do you have any big partnerships in the works that may help onboard people to this type of platform, as opposed to in the United States, we have a company called Buick. You know, it's a General Motors company. Right. They've got an amazing ad that just came out where people are like, oh, that's a great Buick. I love your Buick. And it's like, well, oh, that's yeah. not a Buick. That's an Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a really well-made ad. Right. But it's true. It's that that car, like you mentioned, is where so much data can be exchanged and gathered and you spend so much time in it. So that to me, I agree. Uh, the, the automotive industry looks like an opportunity for you to start onboarding, but are you making inroads or do you have a partnership maybe in wait that could help? Because I, I feel like that people, they use Alexa because it's convenient. They don't really care. They don't seem to care that it's missing yeah. in on you. But, you know, um, Amazon did a fantastic job of making it super dirt cheap at Christmas time. So everyone was giving it to each other so that it could show up in your home. Oh, yeah. Everybody, who doesn't love the novelty of it, though? Alexa, play uh, top 40 hits. Alexa, right. what is the definition of this? Alexa, it's my parents have it and I hate it and I keep asking them to please take it out of their house so that yeah. Alexa's listening to everything and they're recording everything. And they don't, they don't care. So, but also we we know that this is not going away. Yeah, I mean the convenience right. of the, the Alexa type devices is not going away. So I see that. I'd like to think that what, what what you guys are doing would be could be beneficial in ways if it truly is what you say. You know where you can control who sees what. But I feel like you got to get in some other car really quickly so people get on your platform before. Uh, Alexa just owns it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I'm still not able to disclose the name of the German automotive company with whom we're launching a, a, a groundbreaking blockchain deal and decentralized identity solution deal. Um, this is this is gonna come out in the next month, so stay tuned. Uh, but there's definitely there's definitely coming a solution to the to the masses, to the industry, to the to the end consumers, which you know they're hungry for solutions. As we were talking before, you know people are recognizing that well, a car is not a car anymore, right? It, it is again, is a vehicle for for data, and people are not only realizing that, but educating themselves about this matter and about these issues. Now, yes, we are coming with the solution, and yes, we have a, a grand partner on our side. I cannot disclose the name, but um, it, this is this is going to be public in, in the next months. Um, but also, it's interesting what you were mentioning about Amazon and Alexa, right? I mean, in all honesty, the technology that these guys have created is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, I mean, kudos to Amazon for this Right for creating this piece of technology for making life sometimes a bit easier. Now the issue is not the product itself. The issue is what is Amazon doing with that data? Right? Is Amazon trying to sell you more products than what you actually need? Why is that? Is the American society actually consuming more because of that reason or not? So I think a study has to be conducted as well on that regard. But I think the Amazons and the Facebooks and the Googles are recognizing this trend as well. They acknowledge that blockchain and protecting data and decentralized identity frameworks and uh, self-sovereign ID is coming. Is You cannot stop it. People want it. Um, so they will have to comply with it. That's the way I see it. There is no way out. Yes, I mean it's it's the natural progression of technology. It's part of our lives. We're forever intertwined. When we talk to people like you with uh, companies that are offering these types of services, my goal is to at least try to uh, simplify the information and educate people on why our privacy and data is so important and why blockchain technology 
could be a huge game changer for us as individuals and put more power in our hands. Absolutely. So, you know, that that's the goal, at least on our end, that um, people understand what's at stake and, and why they should care. Absolutely. And I think it's remarkable the job that you guys are also doing. And, you know, this is what, what keeps me going forward and pushing forward in the blockchain industry is because exactly people like you guys, you, you know, you're, you're really educating people. You are broadcasting this information. You're being aware of what's going on. And I think this is also remarkable. And this is the beauty of the blockchain community, of the industry, of the new technologies, is that we're not looking at age differences anymore. We're not looking at race or gender. We're, we, we don't Actually, we don't care about that. We care about end results. We care about protecting societies. We care about information influx. We care about public education. We care about, um, you know, people learning how to deal with the 21st century, how to deal with the digital economy. And I think the digital economy has become much more than just a few clicks and getting a product delivered to your door. You have to understand, people have to understand that there is much more involved and it's not all bad. Actually, the self-sovereign identity framework um, enables you and empowers you to become a self-sovereign citizen online with access to your data and with complete power over it. But also in terms of money, in terms of finance, Blockchain is, I mean, it's a complete revolution. The so-called DeFi, decentralized finances. I mean, that's a world in its own. This is empowering people to have complete access to their financial situation, to their financial roadmaps, to their lives, to their, to their economic lives. You don't have to rely on a bank anymore. You don't have to rely on a established set of rules dictated by a government that you might not agree with on the first place. So I think this is empowering to say the least. And I think this belongs to the 21st century. So I'm not that afraid of the Googles anymore. I'm not afraid of Facebook anymore. I'm not afraid of Amazon, Huawei, Tencent. I think we have the right tools. We have the right technology. We just need to apply it and we're going to be good. Well, how do I do it? I mean, uh, I always hear about blockchain ID or decentralized ID. And how do I do it? How do I get my identity on the blockchain? I think just even personally, I've been like, well, how does that really work? How do I get it on there, control it? I mean, I think it's probably more simple than I think of it in the abstract. So just tell us how we would do that on the ontology platform. Sure. Well, as an end user, uh, as an individual, it's actually pretty straightforward. So you just go to your phone and you download the Onto app, O-N-T-O. Once you create your account, which is super straightforward, um, you will have immediate access to your Ont ID. This is how we call the ontology identification. And once you have that Ont ID, I mean, immediately means that you are the owner of your name, of your data. And now you can start controlling third parties, let's call it the Googles or the social medias. You're going to control which data you're going to share with these platforms, right? So if that's your email and your name, that's all what you're going to be sharing. And a third party identity anchor is going to verify your data protected by the existing rules and laws from that continent where you find yourself in. So if you're in the States, um, there is a third-party validator that works with a U.S. law that complies with the U.S. law and says, okay, this citizen has requested this identity framework. Uh, we give it to him or her, and you are basically approved. So ontology is only enabling you to use these, these frameworks, but it's actually very straightforward. Just download the app. You have immediate access to your aunt ID. Um, once you have it, you can claim you're basically you're the owner of your data so far online. I, I mean, I, it's easy to see on the I've got your app and I'm, I can see where you set that ID up. But I think that next step is the part where we're, I'm a little fuzzy on. 
like where I'm using it. You know, are, are we at a stage where there's really not much of that happening? And so I'm not encountering the need or if I set this up, will I then see more opportunities to use it? Absolutely. So once you have the app, for example, and you have your aunt ID, this is where things get very interesting. So you have your aunt score, as we were talking before, you have your credentials, you have authentication, social authentication, so you can connect your aunt ID to social media platforms, but also you have access to assets um, or digital assets in this case. So at the moment, for example, if you are strong into the token economics and you're purchasing tokens, um, you will have access to all of your tokens within the app. You don't have to share your 16 digits key anytime that you want to make a transfer to your wallet. You can just use your name or convert it into a name. Since we're working with our great partners in the industry, Unstoppable Domains, fantastic team as well. So yeah, you verify, you claim your data, you claim your ID, and you have access to your on score. You can discover all the dApps, so decentralized applications. You have access to decentralized finance platforms. You can exchange tokens, swap tokens, and the list goes on and on. You also have access to non-fungible tokens, collectibles, and these all protected by your decentralized identity. So you are the owner of your data and you're only sharing the data you want with these platforms. So this is the ontology community. If you're in and you register, this is all possible within this community. Are we going to see other companies that are going to try to emulate what you're doing and create their own communities as well? And can you be part of multiple communities with your identity? For sure. I mean, within the blockchain ecosystem, decentralized identity, decentralized credentials are booming, to say the least. So actually, even universities like BRIC universities, you know, they can already upload the university credentials and you as a student can claim that your diploma is actually valid. So whenever you're looking for a job in the future, you can share your diploma information with that company, but you will share only the piece of information that they need to know and learn about. So if it's your grade, you will only share your grade and the name of the university. If you only want to share the name of the university, that's all what you're going to be sharing. If they're looking for a KYC, well, since you already have a KYC validation framework within the ontology app, you will just show exactly what they're looking for and nothing else. And these will be uploaded again as in a smart contract on the chain. Um, and since it's a public chain, you will always see what you're sharing in real life. So on the KYC part, yeah, that, that KYC part, that's where... I just, I can't stand it to need to show a photo ID and my picture to some stranger in some country. I'm <laughs> right. not even sure I know how to pronounce the name. Right. It, does this allow me to just say, you don't need that, buddy. Here's my aunt ID. That's all you need. Right. Yeah, you can, you can definitely do it. So the, that's part of a credential, right? So KYC is just a credential. You're, you're trying to explain who you are. You are, it's a proof of who you are right? So we call it authentication. So whenever you have your own ID, that provides you with an identity authentication service. So the credentials will be uploaded. And this is all what you're going to be sharing in the future. So we work with these third parties like CEFCA or Shafti Pro or Identity Mind Global. So these companies will preserve your data safely. And whenever you want to show that or, or run that KYC, you will just have it already uploaded. And that's all what you're going to share using the Onto app, for example, or your Ont ID. Like, hey, guys, this is me. This is all what you need now. Move along. And but would the guys you're sharing it with even have the ability to store that? Yeah, so exactly. So that's a very good question. So one of the things that people keep asking is, well, that data will be off chain or on chain? Well, it will be off chain because for you to have an on chain record, well, 
blockchain is non-transmutable. So it will be, you will have to go back into the blocks and manipulate the blocks, right? You can see what has been happening as in transaction wise, but you cannot change, you cannot codify a block that already happened, a transaction that already happened, right? But a third party validator that works um, as in off-chain can securely and using encryption um, secure your data and once you request that, hey, I need my name, hey, I need my address, please transfer, they will just transfer you that piece of information. And as in a code, this is what you're going to be showing to the to the other party requesting that information. And the future looks like that that company that is requesting for your information, in this case, your address, will have to give you something in return, right? It will have to say, well, Bill, Thank you for providing your info. Thank you for providing your address. Here is a little token in reward for your time, for your energy, and for actually sharing that piece of information. That's how the digital economy looks like. I find that fascinating. And when you talk about uh, resumes, you know how many of us can relate to when you're applying for jobs and how many resumes you send out there. Think of what's on there, your name, address, phone number, your email, everywhere you've worked. Crazy. All the information that somebody who wants to steal your identity has right at their fingertips, right? Right. So if a job uh, offer uh, says, you know, a a potential employer says, I just want to verify that you did graduate where you said you graduated from, you can give them access to just that instead of all that information out there floating out there. Exactly. If you say want to go to a bar and you need to show your ID to prove you're 21 here in the United States, right? You show your ID. Again, that shows your picture, your address, at your height, your weight, everything, where you live, ever, all of that. Right. On the blockchain, you would be able to just give them only what they need, which is proof that you're 21. And, you know, since I'm carded all the time to prove that I'm 21, that that would be very beneficial for me. <laughs> you guys aren't laughing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, Nobody I believes me. I, but, <laughs> I think, but, hey, you know, <laughs> we're, we're hiring. We're hiring in the marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you start to think about all those times you've shared all that stuff and it's out there. And, Absolutely. You know, when, when Absolutely. I think when people start thinking about it in those terms, instead of trying to wrap their head around the technology, then they start to realize, oh, this is not good. I want to do better. I want to know how to protect myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is what we call a data marketplace, right? So in theory, uh, we have seen that in the last decade, you know, the growth of data streams connecting physical world, machines, And the digital world has grown exponentially. Now, what connects them all is data, is that stream, the constant influx of information and valuable data that creates a gigantic profit for third-party companies. In this case, well, social media companies or even, you know, B2C companies. So we believe strongly at Ontology that blockchain as a technology can provide the solutions for a decentralized, and this is very important for decentralized data storage and data sharing. I think this is this is what we're trying to achieve as in a data marketplace, um, and we're pushing forward for that to happen, regardless of GDPR and CCPA, which is great. And I think, again, they have done a great job, a remarkable job, but we have to push the boundaries a bit further and we have to start thinking about this digital world as something real, something that is everywhere 24-7, doesn't sleep, doesn't stop. And there has to be a framework. There has to be a protocol protecting us as citizens, protecting even machines and protecting companies against these sometimes not so nice individuals <laughs> out there capitalizing on that data. John and uh, Ontology is doing that. It's a huge step. Thank you. Regaining our own personal data, putting the power back into our hands. And I'm really excited to see what the company does moving forward. I'm actually 
more excited to find out what German car company you have teamed <laughs> up with because my two favorite cars in the whole world are German uh, made cars. So I'm hoping that it's it's one of them because <laughs> that would be really great Hopefully. To, to be able to experience <laughs> that. What's that? Hopefully. I mean, I really, really hope so. Um, and if you happen to own one of these cars, you know, I'm sure we're going to we're going to find a way on how to snap a picture for you and how to make a very cool ID for yourself and even an avatar um, just to make it a bit cooler, just to make your identity a bit a bit shinier. That would be awesome. In, in fact, you can let the car <laughs> company know that I am more than willing to drive one of their cars for free <laughs> and advertise. <laughs> it's not a whatever car it is. It's an ontology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly, Buick does with exactly. Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Something like that. that. That's actually very, 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 uh, very interesting. Um, but also, I mean, for, for making also these quite clear, um, you know, some people still see the miracle or the wonder kid that Tesla has become as a car company. And the what I believe the beauty of Tesla is that they are much more than a energy company or a car dealer or manufacturer. Tesla is actually a digital company embracing the digital economy and they just happen to use a car, in this case, for collecting data. Now, I don't see that as in, in, a, in a bad way. I actually find it to be very smart and very well executed. Now, the interesting thing we'll see will be to see what Tesla and their founders or their founder uh, do uh, for um, securing their end users and their customers' data how they're applying to reward their customers in the future. Right. Uh, but I think Tesla is in, you know, in the, in the right way. And I believe the whole automobile industry should do the same. Um, I think is their responsibility. Me too. I, I love them. Let's hold their feet to the fire then. Well, I think if, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I mean, Tesla is a natural, I think for what you're doing, but you know, I think if you can get into one of the big Japanese car makers, right. Then we mm. see much more adoption more quickly. Agree. I agree. It's a good point. Well, John, I, we can't thank you enough for uh, spending time with us, uh, especially you're in a beautiful place right now and you're working remotely. And so we do appreciate you taking time. <laughs> from, a, yeah. from an undisclosed Greek aisle. He's, in a, an, he's an, an undisclosed, undisclosed location, location in Greece. Greece. Yes. <laughs> so, hey, guys, I get it. that's on the blockchain. <laughs> I'm working from Naxos. Yes. Uh, which happens to be a gorgeous island. So whenever you have the time and COVID is over, uh, really just come to Greece, visit their beautiful islands. It's just oh, phenomenal to work in here. And, and I bet, yeah. yeah when yeah, just when come COVID's here. over, I'm running away. We're there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, John, Isakira, <laughs> thank you so much again for your time. We really appreciate it and, and taking the time to help our listeners learn because that's the point of what we do and why we do it. So thank you so much. And uh, we hope to check in with you soon when you do reveal what car company you're teaming up with. We will. And thank you. Um, you're doing a remarkable job. And, um, and thank you for everyone listening. I think this is something that we have to pay attention to. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time as well. I appreciate it. So what did you think of that? John seems pretty sharp, and I wonder, really wonder, what major car company they're doing this deal with. I really want to know, but I guess we'll know soon enough, right? Hey, if you could, leave us a review so we can get more and more people to listen. We are on Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it. Even Amazon's new podcast platform. Hit us up at info at adventuresincrypto.tv, or you can always find me on Twitter at Elsa Ramon on air. I want to thank Malto Marketing and Productions for sponsoring and producing this show. Their team is located around the world, literally, but you can find them at multomarketing.com. That's M-O-L-T-O marketing.com. And a big welcome to B Mortgage App, our newest sponsor. You can find their new home affordability calculator on the Apple App Store and Google Play. 
This is for U.S. residents only at this time. Just search Be Mortgage. I'm Elsa. Thanks for coming along. This is a live Q&A discussion about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, tokens, projects, investments, and technology. All discussions are strictly the opinions of each speaker. Statements made by guests are not necessarily the opinion of the host and producers. Investments in Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, tokens, and even stocks are speculative and risky. The information contained herein is for informational purposes only. We are not financial advisors nor registered investment advisors, and all of our content is intended for general information purposes. You must do your own due diligence before investing in anything, especially anything related to cryptocurrencies and tokens. Investments always carry risk. Never risk more of anything than you're willing to lose. So what about crypto?